So there's lots of crazy weather that happens out in the mountains, but in this lesson we're focusing mostly on mountain turbulence and things that could possibly cause you to crash when flying in the mountains specifically. So obviously thunderstorms in the mountains are just as bad as thunderstorms in Florida, but when you're flying around mountains, if there's any sort of winds aloft, what we really want you to take away from this section is if you approach a mountain range from the downwind side and you have wind flowing this direction, so you got air flowing over the mountains, it's going to go up and then back down. If you're approaching from the downwind side, you'll get blown into the mountains and hit the mountain. That's bad. We don't want that to happen. So how high do you have to fly to not have that happen? Well, it's not just 500 or 1,000 feet above the mountaintop because there's going to be that airflow well over top the mountain, arcing over and then coming back down. So say you're about to clear the mountain by 1,000 feet, you could easily encounter some sink, some downdrafts that would push you into the face of the mountain. So you don't want to cross a mountain range perpendicular, especially when the air above, the winds aloft, is flowing perpendicular across that mountain range. Don't approach from the downwind side. If you are, you can do it, but you're going to need to do it by several thousand feet at least, and preferably be in some sort of higher performance airplane that's capable of actually climbing. So if you're already at 12,000 feet and that's the service ceiling of the airplane, you don't have any ability to climb. If you hit any sink at all, you'll probably already be at full power. Not going to be a great day. So watch out for that. How do you know that there is winds aloft? Well, besides your GPS telling you, because your airspeed is different than your ground speed, you can judge that. You have the winds aloft forecast. And then also you have lenticular clouds that appear when the winds start blowing over the mountains and you have stable air. Mountain wave turbulence like this with updrafts and downdrafts is more common to occur when there's stable air. When it's unstable and there's thunderstorms and puffy cumulus clouds around, those air currents kind of disturb that smooth flow of air over the mountain, and the updrafts and downdrafts, because of the airflow of the mountain, may not be so bad. There may be updrafts and downdrafts that are kind of bad because of the unstable air, but not necessarily purely because of that mountain wave turbulence, that air flowing up and down. Now, I've seen this happen not even around mountains, but just around hills, flying around, say, New York or the Northeast there, where there's some rolling hills, and... A uh, clue that this is happening to you is you might be flying along four or 5,000 feet above the surface and the airplane's on autopilot and all of a sudden you're flying along, you don't touch power at all, but you see the airspeed decreasing and the nose kind of rising, but the airplane's not climbing and then you notice the nose lowering and the airspeed increasing, but the airplane's not climbing or descending because the autopilot's changing for that rising air. So as the air rises from below, the airplane pitches down, picks up speed because power's not changing. And then as you hit sink, the airplane raises its nose on autopilot and tries to climb and bleeds off airspeed. Now, if you're hitting really bad mountain wave turbulence, yeah, the airplane will stall or the airplane would overspeed. But just over gentle rolling hills with air winds aloft about you know, 40, 50 knots, you can see just in smoothest air you could be flying in you'll see those changes in airspeed, and that'll be a big clue to you that you're flying over some hilly terrain, some mountainous terrain, and there is smooth airflow over those hills, over those mountains, creating mountain wave turbulence.